a good morning St Luke's. Uh, we're looking in Acts chapter 18 again this morning, uh, building on where we were last week. Uh, and Paul is visiting the great cities uh, of the ancient Greek world. He's been to Athens. We saw him arrive in Corinth uh, yesterday where he'll remain uh, in our Bible reading this morning. And then he'll move on uh, tomorrow to the city of Ephesus to which he will return uh, after a short visit later. These are Paul's visits to these larger urban areas uh, and particularly the last two, uh, Corinth and Ephesus, will receive under God's direction uh, from Paul extended teaching visits. Uh, there's a reason and there's a method to this. Paul's purpose is to establish and to build up churches in those larger, more populous uh, and uh, more globally significant cities. Uh, the intention is that churches will be started uh, and then from those bases uh, grow and the gospel of Jesus Christ will spread out and spread and spread and spread uh, to reach the rest of the world as Jesus had commissioned back at the beginning of the book of Acts. Uh, we'll see as Paul operates in both Corinth and Ephesus a wonderful partnership between him in exercising the calling that God has given him and the faithfulness of God to that calling. Remember from yesterday that we alluded to uh, an introduction that Paul makes to himself in his letter back to the church in Corinth, that he came to the city in fear and trembling and weakness. Uh, how is it that God would sustain him and his mission through that sense that Paul had? Yesterday we saw three F's. We saw the fellowship, uh, the finance, and the faithful uh, preaching of Paul that began the mission. And today, it's all about the P's, a whole variety of P's to help us think through this passage. Firstly, persecution. We see that as Paul has been preaching, the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive in verse 6. Uh, Paul has been no stranger to this uh, throughout his missionary experiences. Uh, and it's been a common theme for him and we should expect to see it similarly. The temptation in uh, facing persecution, or at least opposition and abuse towards the message of Jesus, uh, will be either to alter that message or to give up. Paul doesn't do either of those things. Instead, we see his second P, that of perseverance. He perseveres, though, not with the synagogue, but rather he perseveres to the mission to the city of Corinth. Previously, uh, back in Acts chapter 13, when Paul had faced opposition from the Jews, uh, he'd done a similar sort of physical gesture of literally shaking the dust from his feet. Uh, he turned his back on the Jews, warned them that they were essentially left under God's judgment and departed uh, from the town, the city of Pisidian Antioch. Here he makes a similar gesture of, uh, uh, of dismissing his responsibility uh, in verse 6. He shook out his clothes in protest, but he doesn't leave the city. Instead, he perseveres by a very extensive journey to next door where he continues to preach. Paul moves his ministry from the public sphere of the synagogue uh, into the private household. The vindication of this method uh, is seen in the conversion of the synagogue ruler uh, Crispus. There's a certain irony in that, isn't it? In the face of persecution, Paul perseveres in his mission to the city of Corinth. What then continues to sustain him in this mission uh, is the promise of Jesus. The promise that Jesus makes to Paul directly uh, in verses 9 uh, through to 11. Maybe it was that Paul himself was thinking in his heart that after this initial success uh, in the house of Crispus, uh, then it was time to move on. Uh, maybe Paul thought that the job was done there after starting this small church. We don't really know. However, Paul's perseverance uh, is endorsed and it's encouraged to continue by Jesus. Jesus makes a promise to him, there's another P, and this promise itself is twofold. Uh, it is that of Jesus' presence and also of his protection. Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, Jesus says. Do not be silent, for I am with you. There is that reassurance of Jesus' presence. No one is going to attack and harm you. A wonderful promise of protection. See, these two things are the antidotes to the fear that Paul had professed about coming to Corinth. When daunted, 
uh, when overwhelmed, uh, when in fear and weakness. We need to be reminded of the presence of Jesus and his protection over us. Uh, that will not always be uh, physical protection, but it will be eternal protection and the promise of the presence of him forevermore. The incident that comes at the end of this uh, uh, time in Corinth in verses 12 to 17 is the proof uh, of Jesus's promise. But why is this that Jesus encourages Paul to stay? Well the answer is that Jesus has many people in this city. In, in process terms we might call it the productivity that follows on uh, from Paul's uh, perseverance. And so this encourages Paul to remain for 18 months, continuing to preach and proclaim the word of God as the primary means for establishing and building up churches. So in the face of persecution, Paul perseveres in his mission under the promised presence and protection of Jesus. Uh, so as Paul preaches, it produces growth of the church as people respond positively. I think I'm all out of peas there, to be honest. Uh, what we need to see uh, throughout this is the wonderful work of God. Paul is engaging with a culture that was miles away from the monotheistic worldview uh, of the synagogue and the Jewish communities that he was used to. So also how much of our culture and society is equally miles away from God. Yet where Jesus has people, he will keep us faithful such that they are called in. Let that truth spur us on as it did for Paul. Let me pray for us this morning. Heavenly Father, where it seems as though the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is rejected, help us to persevere, uh, neither to give up on that message or to alter it, but would you point us to fertile grounds uh, where the gospel is received. Would you keep your church faithful in the preaching of Jesus Christ, pointing others uh, to the salvation and forgiveness that is in him. And would you bring in all of the people that you have called and chosen. For in Jesus' precious name we ask. Amen.